Hello everybody, Mr. Sticksman here, and welcome back to Stormworks. In today's video, we're going to be building this engine right here. It's the one that I made a video on a few days ago, but today I'm going to build it and actually sort of talk through the process at the same time, okay guys? So it's not a tutorial, I just want to clarify that now. This will not be a tutorial, and the reason for that is because, you know, I don't really think I'm an expert on this stuff, um, and, you know, there's always ways of doing things better and so this is not an example of a perfect engine that is for sure but what I have done is actually a couple of upgrades to the engine that you can see right here so this version on screen now is actually the old version and the new version we're going to make today and it's going to be better anyway guys let's get started Right then, and the first thing we're going to do is put symmetry mode on, actually, because <laughs> that's going to help quite a bit. And then we're going to start building the base or the stand for this engine. So that's just five blocks, I think it was. And then over here we have a couple on either end. You know, these sort of uh, bases or stands, they're not crucial, but I'm going to be using it just to make sure the engine doesn't fall over when we spawn it in. And also we can sort of combine a few components into the stand and make it look a bit neater and you know give them a place to go sort of thing so that's why we're doing this here and we'll just put another couple of blocks up the top I'll also actually convert it using our paint tool and the replace color mode over there into dark grey because that's what we had in the other video as well now we're going to switch off symmetry mode just so we can see a bit better what we're doing and we're going to start building the main engine itself beginning with the crankshaft actually so we're going to grab that and we are building a one by one engine, a smaller engine here. Now we're actually using three crankshafts here and the reason for that is because even though we've got two cylinders on either side and not three cylinders on either side, um, I'm going to be using this extra piece of crankshaft here for extra space essentially, so that's why we've got that. And then we might as well add our cylinders next because that would make sense I guess. So we're going to find those one by one cylinders and they're going to go at the back over here and on the other side as well, okay? Next we're going to add the clutch and that's going to be a one by one clutch right onto the back of the engine, okay? And at the front of the engine we're going to add a belt. Like this. Now we're going to add the fuel and air components to the engine. So if we go over right towards these cylinders here, and we're going to select this air manifold to begin with. So we're going to have four of these, okay? So there's one on either cylinder, and they're pointing inwards towards the center. Because what we're going to do is actually join them together and put them into a couple of scoops up above, all right? I'll explain this in just a moment, uh, but let's get that done first. So we'll go and get some pipes next. Um, I'm also actually going to start building these in a yellow colour just like in the other video so you know, to avoid any confusion there. But we'll get a T-piece, quickly switch over to our yellow colour here and start building it. The T-pieces are going to face upwards just like that and, uh, and like this, okay? And then on top of those we're going to have a couple of scoops as well. Now what's cool about these scoops is, and I didn't know if this would work, but actually if you put them sort of in line with each other like this, then the one at the back is actually still going to uh, intake air, which is interesting, even though, you know, it's kind of right up against the other one. Um, there is no actual visual gap here, but yeah, apparently air <laughs> can get through to them, so that's cool. Uh, at least at the moment, things might change of course. So that works, alright, now we're going to add our fuel manifolds next. So we're going to go around to the back of the engine, behind the cylinders, and search for manifolds again. And get the fuel manifold, alright, so that's just going to face upwards here. Of course you can face them outwards or down or whatever, um, but I'm just putting them up for now. Now in the last video on this, I actually put my fuel tanks straight onto the manifolds, which is perfectly fine, um, you know, if you just want to sort of get up and go straight away. But of course, in this case, we can't actually refuel our engine because there's no sort of gap in between where we can put fuel in or take it out. Um, so if you want to do that, of course, you might want to have, uh, for example, just a very basic idea, you might want to have a T-piece, and then you could have a tank on that, and then you can have a fluid hose anchor on there. Now, we're not going to have this set up. I'm just showing you that, of course, if you do want to refuel it, you'll, you'll have to have some kind of filling system like that. But yeah, we're just going to take this off and put it straight on to the uh, manifold for now. 
All right, fantastic. And of course, we want to just make sure they are set to diesel, which they will be uh, as standard when you place them down. Okay. Now, the reason why I've got four air manifolds and two fuel manifolds is, and you can have as many or as few as you want, uh, but in this case right here, what we generally want is twice as much air as fuel going into the engine. Now, this is not going to give us a perfect air to fuel ratio okay so it's not the perfect mixture at all but what it does mean is that we can get it running right out of the box straight away pretty much because we have twice as many air manifolds as we do fuel all right and then of course we can fine tune that in the future if we want to get the exact sort of performance that we require from this engine but this should work right out the box and we will test it later anyway so let's carry on for the moment next we're going to have a look at the exhaust for this engine and my exhausts are going to go underneath the cylinders so first of all we need a manifold uh, a manifold corner i think it is which is this one right here that's it exhaust manifold corner and that's going to go here and here and then same on the other side as well we could do it in symmetry mode of course but uh, i forgot to turn it on at the moment there we are then we're going to use a couple of pipes here just to sort of bend them backwards towards the rear of the engine and actually i will put symmetry mode on in just a second then we'll get a, a t-piece here just to connect those together like that and then we're literally going to send an exhaust right out the back just like that all right you can make them as long as you want of course um, and you can have catalytic converters if you want to have a bit less smoke uh, stuff like that but that's what we've just got in this version here and that should work just fine next we're going to add the cooling to this engine all right so what we're going to do is grab a couple of cooling manifolds here uh, these ones here coolant manifolds and I'm going to have one on either side of the engine now the reason for this really is that these cylinders at the moment are on their own they're standing on their own each pair is not joined to the other pair they're separate and so if I cool the cylinders on the right hand side here that's not going to cool the cylinders on the left hand side unless for some weird reason the coolant can actually travel through the air manifold for example uh, which I don't think it can uh, it might by some weird chance but uh, yeah as far as I'm aware the coolant is not going to actually be shared between the cylinders and so what we're going to do is build one coolant system which actually goes into two manifolds on separate pairs of cylinders anyway I hope that makes sense but uh, the next thing we need of course is actually a pump a fluid pump and we're going to put one down here because it's going to be operated by the engine belt which is this thing right in front of us here okay so now let's go and get a pump and we're going to use this one right here because it has the belt on it just chuck that under there okay excellent now what we can see here is that here are the two manifolds up the top right and then here is the inlet for the pump and here is the out okay so what we're going to do is actually bring uh, or pull a lot of the coolant from the cylinders okay down into the pump it's going to kick it out into the radiator and then it's going to go through up above these coolant manifolds and through them into the cylinders again then it's going to come down through the pump radiator and so on and go around in that kind of circle so this is actually going to be a bit of a different design to what I did in the other video. This is going to be a better version. Anyway, let's get started with the uh, the pipe work for this system here. And what we're going to do then is actually, let's put a T-piece in first um, onto the pump itself, okay? Just like that. There we are. Then the two coolant manifolds are going to connect to that with corner pieces. There we go. Okay, so basically the two manifolds are going straight in to that pump there. All right. Next, when the water or coolant comes out of the pump, it's going to go right into the radiator straight away. Okay, down here. I've just turned off symmetry mode because uh, this will be slightly asymmetrical, this design, at certain points. So now let's go and get our radiator then. Now I'm going to use this uh, fluid heat radiator here, okay? It's not necessarily the best choice, it's just what I'm using for this engine. Um, you'll probably find that the electric fan radiator thing here is a better option. So yeah, this is probably a better choice, but I just prefer the look of the other one, so that's why I'm using it in this case. Um, and it still works, it's not as good, but it still does actually work to a certain degree. So I'm just going to chuck that on there for now, okay guys? So our coolant is now going from the pump into the radiator and then it's going to come out over here and what we want to do is take it back up to the top 
and down into the manifold so it goes back into the cylinders again all right so we'll grab a corner piece here and just stick it on there then we'll get a straight piece as well and just bring it up and then around now another difference between this version and the other version is that I'm not going to have a fluid tank on this one. I'm not exactly sure about the pros and cons of adding them and, and not having them, but what it does do is cool the engine without one. So I'm just, in this case, not including one, but I'm not saying it's the best option. We're just not going to have one on this engine, alright guys? And uh, the next thing we're going to add is a an angle corner. So I'll put that here like that. And then all we have to do now is hook it into the other manifold as well. And there we go. That is now a complete cooling system, which should work at least up to a certain point. Now, one thing I have noticed, which is quite strange, is that uh, sometimes one side of the engine is actually a bit hotter or colder than the other side of the engine by a number of degrees. And the hotter the engine gets, uh, the greater the difference between those temperatures are. So that's weird, and that probably has something to do with, uh, you know, the length of the pipes on this cooling system here. But anyway, let's carry on here, and uh, hopefully everything will be fine in the end. Alright, we're almost there, to be honest. Next, we're going to put a starter on, an engine starter. And here it is, modular engine starter. That's going to go on the top, so the belt attaches to the belt on the crankshaft and spins that around and starts everything up. And also, we're going to have an alternator as well okay you don't have to have this of course you don't have to have a starter either actually but uh, I'm just putting it on there because uh, that's <laughs> what this uh, this engine is made out of okay we are almost there actually we're almost ready to get this thing running but underneath I'm gonna put a couple of batteries here and that's one of the reasons why I've built this engine stand or base like this I'll put symmetry mode on is that we can actually put components sort of underneath the engine or within the build of the engine they're nice and tucked away they're not very visible but it's all in there right so it's a good way of you know getting stuff into your build without it sort of being sticking out and in the way kind of thing so that's why i've got twin small batteries here and then also on this build i'm going to be using a constant number as well so let's go and grab that and i'll explain exactly why in a second constant number not the on signal but the number in this case so we'll chuck that down there like that okay actually i don't want one on the other side so we we'll cut that out for now there we go now the reason for this and actually let's go into select tool select the constant number and set it to one now the reason for this is that i'm going to have a number one going into my alternator and the clutch on the fluid pump as well the cooling pump okay so basically uh, the clutch inside the pump and the alternator, uh, they're always engaged. They're always going to be charging the engine and circulating the coolant around the cooling system. Um, you don't have to do this, of course. You can have separate throttle controls for those things if you want to. But I'm just doing it this way on this build. So let's go to logic now. And we're going to get our number one here. And we're going to put it into the alternator clutch and the fluid pump clutch as well. Right, okay guys, now that is actually done. That's the actual engine unit, apart from uh, a couple of pipes here and, you know, you can add a gearbox and stuff. Let's do that now. So we get the pipes out. Uh, I'll change them back to dark grey. Okay, so we've got a couple of pipes there. Now, I'm not actually going to be using the gearbox today, but let's just get that colour out. There we go. Um, but I'm going to put it on there just as an example. You know, we've got a gearbox there. And we've got a propeller as well. That's a large propeller on the end. Right, okay, now let's actually get some controls hooked up to this thing and try and get it running, right, guys? I'm going to actually put a base underneath this thing now as well. So we'll just take this and put it over there. Then bring it out a bit because... Uh, well, the reason for that is that I'm going to be putting some throttle levers down and, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and it's just a way of, you know, somewhere to put them on, essentially. So we'll just do that for now. There we go, and all right, I think we're ready, guys, to actually put our controls in and get this thing started up. We'll turn symmetry mode off here. Good, and now we'll go and search for some throttle levers. Okay, now what we're doing at the moment for an initial test is we're not going to uh, make this engine run amazingly right now. We're just going to get it started and make sure that it does actually start. And then I'm going to show you a slightly better kind of version that I've been working on, uh, you know, on, on the side here. But let's just start off right now trying to get it to actually move in the first place, okay? 
So we're going to put uh, a couple of throttle levers down here. Now this one is going to be kind of the engine throttle on the left hand side and the right hand side one is going to be the clutch, alright? Then we're going to have a starter button as well. So it's easier to use a push button for that, so that's what we'll do here. And we might as well add some displays down here as well so that we can actually see how the engine is operating. We'll just chuck four down for now. I don't know if I'm going to use them all, but um, yeah, we'll put them there. Also, because I've put these down in dark grey, I'm going to go over to the uh, the paint tool, go to additive and just brighten up the displays a bit using the whites. Because if you place any block down in a colour, especially a dark colour or a dark shade or you know black or grey or whatever, actually the, uh, the backlights here are also kind of uh, tinted a bit they're darker and they're not as visible so yeah I do recommend that if you want to have a nice bright display but you can have any color that you choose of course anyway that's that done now we're going to start hooking things up so first of all let's go to our batteries okay so batteries on the engine we'll join the two batteries together because they can share power between them and then one of the batteries just go into everything basically we'll just uh, chuck it all over the place there we go Lovely, that's done. Now we're going to go back into data here. And to begin with, we might as well put the start button in because that's a nice, easy one to do. The button is now connected to the starter motor there. And now we can go over to our main throttle lever for the engine. Now, because we've got four air manifolds and two fuel manifolds, we've already got a, you know, a reasonably good ratio, air to fuel ratio, to start the engine. As I say, it's not a perfect air to fuel ratio, but it is enough to get this engine running and to actually use it. So what we can do in this case, nice and simple, is just put this throttle straight into the manifolds. So I've put them into all four of the air manifolds and the fuel ones as well. Now, if we had different amounts of air and fuel manifolds, we might have to use um, a multiply logic gate or sort of, sort of a, you know, a function block or something just to adjust the numbers here or have separate throttles to make sure our mixture is okay so that we can actually start up the engine and actually get it running in the first place. But because I've got this number of manifolds here, we can get it running with one throttle lever straight into all of them. So I hope that that makes sense, guys. Again, you know, it's not necessarily the best way of doing it, but it is enough just to get the engine running and started so that we can see that it actually works. But anyway, let's carry on here, and in a minute we can get it running. So next we're going to actually um, link up the clutch, I think. Okay, so we'll go around here. There is the clutch at the back of the engine, and that's going into that throttle lever there. Also, I will label these. I'm going to reduce the sensitivity on the clutch to around, I don't know, like 50% because it just makes it less uh, prone to stall the engine. Because if you chuck a clutch on straight away it, when the uh, the engine's not very powerful or low on revs, it might be a bit too much for it, so we're going to ease it in a bit more gradually there. Also, on the throttle over here for the engine, I might as well start it up. Now, I've tested this before, of course, and I know that uh, what we want is 0. 0, 0.06, so 6% 6 throttle is enough just to get this thing running. Uh, it's very sensitive, so this definitely isn't the best setup, but <laughs> it will get it running. Also, we can just label that there as well. And I am going to reduce the sensitivity here a lot, actually. Let's put it down to like 10%, because it really is very sensitive in its current setup, all right? Okay, now we better put in some data into these displays right here, okay? So I'm going to add one more thing onto our engine, actually, which I forgot to do earlier, but that's going to be a temperature sensor so that we can, of course, read the temperature on the display over here. Um, so what I'm going to do is go around underneath the engine and I'm going to swap out one of the uh, blocks of the stand for a sort of temperature sensor block. And that will be this one here, the modular engine temperature sensor. So it just goes straight onto the crankshaft like that okay and now we can literally go into logic here select it or select its node and plug it straight into the top display also we're going to get rps which is from the crankshaft itself we're going to put it into the display underneath and then we're actually going to do the fuel now to be honest what i could do is get a couple of gauges so i might as well do that here we go we use a gauge display for the fuel um, which way around do they go, actually? I can't remember now. Is it that? I think it's the other way. Is it that way? I can never remember, but I'm assuming that's the right way anyway. We'll now select them, and it's going to go up to about 21 litres 
per tank. Uh, I believe that's that's how much fuel we've roughly got in each one. So I just set it to 0 to 21 like that. And then we'll go back into logic here and literally just put the uh, fluid tanks into those gauges. Next I'm going to put the battery into one as well because then we can check if the alternator is actually working. Now we don't need to put both batteries in because as they're linked together they're kind of sharing the same power and therefore with these batteries then I mean, you can set up separate dials for them if you want to but uh, I don't think we have to as far as I'm aware. So I just put one battery in and that's going to show us our like overall battery charge. So that's going down here and I will label that one. Make sure I don't forget to label these as well. And then I will of course just uh, give these power. I don't think they need power, that's just for the backlights. But I'll just make sure everything's got power anyway, then we can't go wrong. Now, here's going to be the moment of truth, alright? We're going to spawn it in and see if it works. And if it doesn't, we'll have to make a quick fix. But I reckon this might work. So here's the temperature at the top, okay? RPS underneath, and then battery down there. You can see that our fuel tanks are full up. We've got 21... 0.35 litres in each tank so we can see how quickly that drains um, and also the battery as we start the engine it should drop down a bit okay and then the alternator which runs off the belt um, should actually charge it back up to full again so here we go the throttle is on six percent and zero clutch at the moment let's see it's running Right, okay, so we've got like 8 RPS, 9 RPS, that's going to start increasing a bit more and more as we continue here until it reaches some kind of ceiling. Um, and also the temperature is going up as well, as you can see there. There is our fuel consumption, which is quite interesting. It's very slow, isn't it, at the moment. Now, we're not putting any load on the engine yet. If we put the clutch in, it's going to get much hotter and it's also going to, I'd assume, drain a bit more fuel. I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, I'm assuming it would do, so yeah. But that's very good, that's sort of running at 11 RPS, 11.4 RPS there um, at the moment. Here's our battery which shows 99% on the display there. Now that battery is not charging so maybe I actually forgot to link it up so let's just check that. Yeah there we go guys, I just forgot to link it to the battery. Now it is connected, let's try again. I've also actually just turned up my sound a bit as well, so hopefully you guys can hear this a bit better now. But everything is exactly the same, but now the battery is plugged in. It's showing less than one at the moment. Let's turn it on. And now we can see the number for the battery is increasing until it gets up to one, so it is definitely charging. Okay, so now we know this engine works pretty well, right? It starts up... Um, we'll just check the clutch actually as well it's probably going to stall it to be honest we'll give it a bit more throttle there we go the smoke's coming out as well okay please don't blow up <laughs> should be all right where's the temperature there we go 20 27 degrees now this is a bit of an effort isn't it to get this going so that's why in a minute the next version of my sort of control setup for this engine is going to be much better we won't have to mess about like this basically Let's bring that down a bit now. But the uh, yeah, the propeller is spinning quite nicely. Uh, you can also, of course, see the data on the cylinders here. Air fuel ratio 13 to 7. You can see the temperature there, the efficiency. The exhaust is 100%, which means that's fine for now. Uh, we've got nothing to worry about in terms of exhaust. Anyway, as I say, this is not you know a perfect version. It's just a running version. We've just managed to get it started. Now let's go and have a look at a slightly better way of running this engine. All right, so now we have our new setup for this engine. And the main difference really is that the throttle lever here is now going into this microcontroller first and then over to the fuel and air manifolds on the engine and all that sort of thing. So there's a bit of a step in between this time. Um, but otherwise, it's all very similar. We've got the same gauges and displays on here. This is battery, by the way. I forgot to label that. We've also got temperature and RPS. And when we turn this engine on in just a second here, we're going to have a look at the RPS because that's really the main difference. So let's give it a quick start up and see what happens to the RPS here. 
Now what we've seen there is the RPS very quickly got to a certain amount and then stopped. So 3.87, it's now staying there at that level. Whereas on the old version of this setup, uh, the RPS would still be climbing gradually and there wouldn't be much control over it. Now the reason why that is, is because the throttle isn't just saying we want to put more power into the engine, it's actually saying we want to try and get to a certain amount of RPS instead, a target RPS value. So if we now increase our throttle a bit, this is going to very quickly increase as well and then just stay at a new level. So let's try that. So now 9.1 on the throttle and we've got 7.94 here and it's already there at that level and it's stuck there now. Again we've just increased it to 13.7 and now it's stuck at 12.4 rates and if you go back down again it's the same thing it very quickly goes down and achieves that new value. Now the problem is and I'm not quite sure how to adjust this guy so feel free to let me know how to improve this setup but basically say I set my throttle to 9.2 as it is right now the RPS is not 9.2, it's actually a bit less than that, and I'm not sure how to actually match them up the same. So they, they seem to be quite close together, but not quite identical. So again, if we go down to like, try and get a nice round number here, if we try and get 7, there we go, 7 exactly, and it's 5.85. And the same up really high in the RPS, I think the maximum I've set this to is 30, there we go. 30 on the throttle, 28.48 on the display. So yeah, I'm just not sure why it's not exactly matching up. Maybe some of the RPS sort of gets, you know, lost as the whole system is working and losing a bit of power. I'm not too sure. But uh, yeah, if anyone knows, do feel free to uh, let me know if I can improve that somehow. Anyway, now let's go into the workbench and have a look at, uh, at how I've set up this microcontroller here. Okay, so we get our select tool out and click on that microcontroller, go straight into it over to Logic and we can see this is all it is inside, very small, very simple. And I am new to this by the way guys, I'm very new to using PIDs and things, so of course this system can be improved a lot, a lot of features can be added to it, uh, things can be changed around, but as we've just seen it does work at least in some kind of a basic way. So anyway, uh, let's explain how this is working. So. First of all, we've got our throttle lever here, okay? That's the lever we're using to increase and decrease our uh, engine's RPS. And that is going straight into the set point. So basically, the throttle lever is trying to tell the engine how much RPS it wants it to produce, okay? And then down here, we have the process variable on the PID, and that is the RPS from the crank. So essentially, you just put the, uh, the RPS value into the PID here and therefore it knows that this is what we're trying to adjust with our throttle. The next stage is the constant on signal and all that does is make sure that our PID is always on and it's always working. Okay so when all of this stuff has gone into the PID, now I've got some values here and I have played around with these values a bit. I don't quite understand all of these values properly so you know it's not really uh, something I can comment on too much here but that's just what I'm using at the moment. And then from the PID, of course, it's going straight into our fuel and air manifolds. And really, it's just as simple as that, to be honest. But of course, as I say, this system can be improved a lot. We can add a lot more features to this, make it more complicated, make it more accurate, perhaps, at the same time. Um, but this is just what I've achieved so far, and at least it does work to some degree. Anyway, guys, that's all we've got time for in this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to everyone who smashes the like button. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everyone who subscribes, anyone who leaves a comment, just anyone who watches any of my videos at all. It's always an absolute pleasure, guys. Thank you so much. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.